All right, I'm in here several days into my winter training and first few days I was just getting reps. Now I'm starting to make a few tweaks and the first tweak that I make is I'd slightly change my releases and I'm not being specific to the style of release. This is thumb activation. I'll shoot this for a while and might move into some of the, the tension activated releases. But one of the things that I wanted to talk about was the size. So this, this is our mini. So in the knock to it, as well as the Silverback Plus series, we have a mini version, we have a regular version. The main difference is gonna be the size of the hand that would fit the whole diameters. You can see the mini obviously has a much smaller diameter. It's a little bit more compact. So someone with a smaller hand, this is gonna feel a lot more natural versus one where these are, are very big and there's a lot of extra room. Now for me, my hands are kind of in between. I'm not a, a large handed person, but I'm also not a small handed person either. What I tell people when you're trying to select the two, if you're a small, medium and glove size, that's gonna be a good indicator that a mini is probably gonna fit you the best. Large XL, the regular size is gonna be awesome. Now, if you're someone that doesn't have large hands, one thing that you may wanna consider is actually seeing how the mini fits you. And the reason I say that is because for years in competitions, I actually shot releases that I had Jerry make for me with smaller hole diameters. So in target season where I wasn't having to wear a glove on my hand, I actually preferred the smaller ones and here's why. If you shoot a hole diameter where it almost feels like it might be too small, what it prevents you from doing is going too deep into the release. So for me, and I would say I have a large hand, not an XL hand, when I slide these in here, I really can't go past that middle knuckle. And that's a mistake that a lot of people make when they're shooting a handheld release it's really critical that your hand is flat like this and you want the release aid right through this row of knuckles here. So you can see with a mini, this thing stops automatically right there. Now again, during hunting season, when I have gloves on, it's, it's a little bit too small, but for my target training, I love the repeatability of knowing when to stop so that I'm perfectly aligned. Now, if you're someone that has small hands and you're shooting a regular size, you'll notice that you do have the ability to go much deeper. And that's a mistake that a lot of people make and a big reason why they're inaccurate with a handheld release. Here's why. If you go past your middle knuckle, and you get into this part of the hand to hold the release. Well, now once you actually contour your hand to hold it properly, you're gonna see that this side of the hand start, your knuckles start, start to bulge out. And I tell people all the time, no one likes knuckles against their face. So if your hand starts to bulge, this is never gonna feel comfortable you're gonna feel like someone's punching you in the side of the face with their knuckles. So then what people do naturally, if they grab the release too deep, is because of that contour like that, they end up bringing this shoulder in so that they can tuck that row of knuckles behind the jaw. You don't wanna do that. You want that hand flat and you want that flat surface laying perfectly on the side of your face, just like this. And that's what shooting the mini does for me. If you've never tried it, this is something that I would recommend if you know that you're not an XL size, it's something that you're gonna find a difference in your accuracy because of the repeatability of when that release goes onto your hand and stops. One of the things that I teach people is I talk about how to actually put your trigger on your thumb and where to put that. And that'll be in a different video. What I will tell you is when the release is forced to be in the same place on the hand and the hand is flat, your ability to move your thumb into a repeatable place 
greatly increases versus when you try to tuck that trigger back further into the hand, the hand immediately starts to round out. Or in this case, if you've grabbed release more like a pair of brass knuckles, when you're trying to hold onto it to pull it back, your hand is not flat. You now have a contour. It's gonna give you a very different feel on the face. You're gonna end up changing things in the front end so that the back side of your technique feels good instead of feeling knuckles on the side of your face. So remember that when you take your hand and you bend your fingers over the flat top part right there, that is where the release should fit perfectly. And for me, when I go to my target season, when I'm shooting tacks, when I'm shooting indoors, anytime I don't have a glove, even though the fit is a little bit tight, it actually forces me to be repeatable in exactly where that goes on my hand. So if you haven't tried it, you might want to. This is a, a really awesome way to improve your repeatability of where the release goes into your release hand.